Hello, Breakpoint. Thanks so much for having us. Um, I'm Lucy Harley McEwen, uh, the NFT and gaming editor at The Block. Um, and I have a man who needs no introduction in many circles that will be here, um, Brendan Icke, uh, who um, is the CEO of Brave. Uh, Brave has 20 million daily active users, um, 57 monthly active users, um, and has become a mainstay in uh, many crypto uh, <laughs> crypto circles. So um, yeah, please welcome Brendan. Thanks. Raise your hand if you're not using Brave. <laughs> I use Safari. Uh, I don't have Chrome installed right now. I don't need it. Um, so yeah, glad to be here. Thanks so much. Um, so we thought we would take a quick look back. Um, this is Brendan's uh, second year at Breakpoint, uh, and many updates have happened since then. So um, do you want to just give us a little overview of um, what the year's been like? Yes. Well, we got going uh, in the beginning of the year in earnest. Brave has a lot of engineers. Some are true crypto natives. Uh, a lot of browser engineers, too, were trying to make everybody learn about crypto. And so some of our top people did learn about Solana and got going on it January or uh, early February. And then we had basic support out in May, and we've been rolling ever since. So I have a few slides I could show if you want. Yeah, absolutely. OK, let's have a look. Um, kind of meat and potatoes. There's a video here. I think I can play it. This is actual uh, video from Android, I believe. This is what the wallet interaction looks like. Um, it's, we think, getting competitive with other wallets out there, and we're going to keep going to weave it into the browsing experience. We have hardware wallet support. Uh, we have uh, NFT gallery uh, coming along. We're working with Magic Eden and um, we're excited about some of the things that are coming uh, that we'll be announcing in the next few weeks from some of our partners. Uh, that gives you a feel for what it looks like. Um, here are some more screenshots. So what happened in May was just basic buy, sell, send support. And then we quickly added support. And that was for tokens as well, SPL as well as Sol. We then added um, DAP support. And uh, we've followed that up with NFT support. Now, when you open a wallet in a browser, you can obviously look at it like a portfolio view in a sort of standard wallet or brokerage-style web app. And that's what's shown here. But the really uh, killer things we want to do lie ahead of us. We want to put the wallet in the flows with merchants. So you can check out with crypto. Maybe we can even virtualize a MasterCard, and you can use that too. That gets us into all the checkout flows without having to interact or sell uh, the merchants on new JavaScript to embed for their, their checkout process. Um, we'd like to make it possible to mix credit and crypto. Um, we're also looking at things like in our search engine, Brave Search, which I hope you will try. Uh, it's the default if you make a new profile in Brave. We're looking to embed Web3.js right in the search engine result page. So if you're looking for what looks like a pair of crypto assets, we will offer to do a swap if you have one of them. Or if you are looking for a single symbol, we'll help you buy it if you want to get onboarded that way. Google won't do this. They're not touching crypto that I know of. I think Bing likewise. But Brave Search will. Um, here's another uh, screen showing the account view and helping you see your assets. Uh, also, you see the Ledger hardware wallet uh, indication at the bottom. We have a wallet partner program. This is growing like gangbusters. Uh, here are some of the names. Um, we're going to have SNS name resolution support through Bonfita, right? You can see them up top there. Um, this thing's bigger than I thought. Uh, it's, it's bigger all the time. One more slide. Anyway, that's, that's an update. I, I just wanted to show progress because we view this as a long-term commitment to weave Solana and Brave together, weave the wallet into search and browsing, and make Web3 real. Predict the future by inventing it. Yeah, great. And so, you know, we've looked back, looking forward. Um, what can we uh, hope to see uh, coming up from you guys in the crypto space? So, games. I, I have a long relationship with games. Um, when I was at Mozilla, I met um, Tim Sweeney, 
we did a joint announcement at GDC 2013. We were running Unreal Engine in the browser at 30 frames a second. This was using a subset of JavaScript that was statically typed and WebGL and web audio and things like that. This has evolved now. You can get Unreal Engine 5 running at full frame rate using WebAssembly, WebGPU. The web standards are now supporting games. And I'm not ready to announce it, but we're working with some, some game developers on, on big news that will tie Rave and Web3 Gaming together. And it makes perfect sense to me because I'd like to see you know, a real metaverse that's open, that lets you take assets with you. Those assets should be attested to by a blockchain. They should be on the chain in your wallet. Your wallet should help you keep things uh, yours across different games through different portals. So this, this will take some time to build, but we're building a Web3 gaming practice at Brave. And as many people know, the landscape of online gaming is changing really fast. Um, I wondered uh, how you see the future of that in Web3. Um, you know, will it be browser first? Um, how do you optimize for that? Yeah, it's tricky because you have uh, the game developers, and certainly I've talked to Tim Sweeney on and off about this, who have their own interests in the integrity of their game, let's say. Uh, but a lot of games support mods, and browser-based games should support things like mashups. So one of the things that Brave tries to focus on is the user's right to block content, block all those threats to your privacy, but also maybe reformat or mash up content. So I'm in interested in what can be done with this tier of development. This is like a new ecosystem to, to explore and to have developers migrate into. So we're, we're trying to make Web3 gaming user first. And um, you know, changing tack uh, slightly, um, what are the biggest issues you see uh, with scaling in Web3? Um, you know, what, what's coming up? What are the headwinds? So I have lots of security worries because I see not only is Web3 to be accessible, pretty much done through Web2, right? We're, we're doing things with servers you've browsed to on, at well-known addresses. But more and more can be done directly on chain, even if you're using some kind of a, a server to get at, at the underlying network. And I hope that we can then extend the cryptographic protocols all the way into the browser so you don't just blindly trust the server, right? This is how we're accessing Ethereum right now in, in the Brave Wallet through um, Infura, let's say. And nothing against Infura, but that is, a, as Moxie Marlin Spike pointed out earlier this year, that is kind of a Web2 trust the server model. It's not a true Web3 model. So we're working over time on cryptography. I was excited to see this Bravos wallet. It's, it's like spelled like Brave, except it's got two A's and an OS instead of an E. Uh, and they were showing something with StarkNet that was really cool. They were using the secure enclave on your phone to hold the private key and do the signing and make your phone into sort of a hardware wallet. It's not quite as hardened as a ledger. At Brave, we have a lot of hardware wallet maximalists, and they think you should get a ledger at least for your cold wallet where most of your assets are. But a lot of people use Phantom, or if they're using Ethereum, they use MetaMask. They're using um, software key. They're, they're not protecting their assets. So that should be for the stuff that you're just willing to put at greater risk. But if you can put things into the secure enclave on your phone and keep the private key there and do the signing there, that's sort of a midpoint between a ledger and just a pure software key where you're taking your life in your hands. Uh, and you know, with a browser extension, there are even more security attack surfaces to worry about. So Brave is trying to worry about security, and that's one of the things that keeps me up at night. Absolutely. Um, and I just wanted to sort of bring it around to uh, a hot topic, which is bots. Um, and I wondered um, what your opinion is in, on like how to fight bo bots with ad tech, uh, which I guess is something that um, you guys are kind of primed to do, I think. Yes, um, we, we do private ads in the browser. They're opt-in. They there's no data collection to Brave at all. We don't target you. The matching is done by machine learning in the browser that looks at a fixed catalog updated a couple times a day for everybody in a region. So everybody gets the same catalog. It's not that big. It's like an anti-malware list. And the machine learning picks the best link in that catalog to load the creative from. You can control the frequency. You get 70% of the revenue. We have Brave Search, and we're not monetizing the free leg of that. We will. We have a premium version. If you don't want ads, you can pay for it. Some Several thousand people already have signed up. But for the free leg, we'll also have private search ads that pay you at least as much as we get from the gross. Now, private ads so far require us to do the direct selling. 
but we're going to try to get demand partners in for the Brave search ads because you need a lot more demand to match the big supply of all those keywords people search for. And we're going to try some novel techniques to decentralize parts of the search business, something Google will never do. But fraud is a problem with ads, and paying the user is a fraud magnet. So we have to do anti-fraud. And one of the ways we do that is, again, ideally with a secure enclave, you can load code in the browser that's not tampered with. It can't be easily fooled. It looks at things like the accelerometer. Like People who do apps like Stepin know how to do this. You can tell if it's a real person. I met somebody in 2017 who was using the JavaScript web accelerometer API, and he could recognize his own gait. He could tell when he danced the hokey pokey. He sold it to an ad retargeting business, which is probably now in violation of the California Privacy Act and the European privacy laws. We can do this privately in a secure enclave and just give a proof in zero knowledge that this is a real human versus not a real human. This is the, a better way to do anti-fraud, and it's something that I think is compelling and needed for a lot of uh, interaction models in Web3, where you're paying users something, you're giving them a piece of the action, but that does draw in fraudsters. And you know, something that's uh, linked to this is your native token BAT, um, which has been in circulation for a while. Um, I wondered if you just wanted to talk through how that works. Um, is there kind of a future plan for the utility of that token? Yes, so we use BAT right now to pay the user 70% from the personal ads you get that are privately matched in the browser. And we're going to use it for the search ads, too. We're adding bat utility for other things, some of which I won't announce here. But we're growing bat utility across multiple chains, and it's already on Solana, as, as it was last year, right through Wormhole. Um, I mentioned my security worries. That certainly includes bridges. And, and Wormhole had a hack early this year. Um, but you know, we're learning as we go. We're improving the technology. And I think a lot of these bridge hacks were just Failures to verify or you know logic bugs, and so as this gets hardened, I think we'll have even more bridging, more bat utility across multiple chains, and we'll, we'll push it hard on Solana because that's where the fees are low. And if you want to then, you know, take your bat back to its native Ethereum chain for long-term cold storage, that's cool, no problem. So we're increasing bat utility every day. Cool. Um, and I just wanted to change topic um, again. Um, I wondered what your thoughts are on um, the state of play and regulation um, and how you see things progressing. Um, are regulators a threat? Yeah, I, I was on a panel uh, yesterday at a regulatory sort of workshop event. That doesn't keep me up at night because I, I just d don't want to worry about it. I'll just, you know, see what comes. But we also do talk to regulators sometimes, and we see other projects talking to them in the US. We, we expect um, things to get ugly, but we, we hope by using reason, we can get them to not do you know, very pernicious things. A lot of the um, turf wars in the US, it seems like, between different uh, regulatory agencies have the risk of overreach. But with good conversations, instead of just going silent, I think we can get uh, reason to prevail. We're trying to get you know, things like Vitalik advocated in a tweet thread that was sort of a response to Sam Bankman frieds long uh, recent thread, which are, if you, instead of treating everybody as a suspect because they, for instance, used tornado cash or they were dusted through it, uh, you can just use proofs and zero knowledge to show that you're not um, on a sanction list or you, you otherwise have desirable properties without revealing your identity. That seems like a better world. So we, I'm a big fan of zero-knowledge proof systems. We need to keep working on them. We need to make them known to the regulators. And I think that will help improve the state of regulatory play. So you're clearly um, very bullish on Solana. Um, you've also deployed on Ethereum. I wondered um, whether Brave is considering any other chains, because I feel like there's been you know, a lot of competition pumping up, uh, popping up in the market. So. Yes, uh, we have a multi-chain wallet, and we're looking at other chains, uh, and we'll have more announcements. We're not um, you know, stopping at any given set of chains, but we are making Solana the default network. That's already the case. So when you make a Brave wallet, you get a Solana account, and it, you get Solana as the default network. Uh, with um, EVM compatibility approaches like Neon or a cross-compiler, it's possible we could then have uh, a lot of smart contract action migrate to Solana. This was the vision that I explained last year. We still have to get those EVM scaling solutions on, on the Solana. 
And you um, talked briefly about smart contracts. I wondered um, what your thoughts are like on the future of that area. Um, what will we be seeing? Yeah, I'm a fan. I, I think you know it's a little disturbing. This is something again, Moxie Marlinspec wrote about. If you're doing NFTs, but the you know the secondary sale royalty is is not through the smart contract. It's it's the check is in the mail promise from OpenSea, or and not to pick on them, but any sort of website, like because that's not something that you can count on in the long run. That business may come into distress, the site may go away or go down. I'd like to see royalties and revenue shares and all the kind of stuff we do move on chain. And that was the big um, research project we did where we had a request for comments and code from many projects to move a large part of the, the BAT private ad system at a station on chain. So the browser keeps uh, uh, ad performance metrics in a black box accumulator, and then it puts bulletproof zero knowledge proofs directly on Solana. And we're still working on that. That's, that's going to happen, I think, in the next six months. Absolutely. Um, and then just jumping off from that, does Brave uh, intend to launch other blockchain products? Yes, but I don't want to pre-announce them and steal my own thunder. You can't so. talk about them. But we, we believe in rolling thunder. We believe in getting stuff out all the time and, and promoting it as it comes out, making it available. When you have a uh, modern browser, you have nightly version, a release channel for nightly builds. It's kind of the bleeding edge, but I, I use it all the time, and it doesn't crash on me. You have the, the beta channel, and you have the stable channel. And you can run all three separate profiles. You can do it on Android, same nightly, beta, and stable. Uh, with iOS, we only have test flight beta releases because Apple's a little restrictive. And you know that is another concern. It's not the regulators, it's Apple. Apple's been a little bit mean to uh, crypto and Web3 and NFTs. And uh, we should fight back. As developers, we should find ways around this. We should lobby our, our you know, Congress critters. Apple, I'm a slave since iPhone 1. Actually, in the 90s, I had a Mac 2CI. But I think they're going too far here, and uh, they need to adjust. It's, it's, it's not cool to sort of close down the, the town and make everyone, like in a company town, use Scrip, use the Apple 30% in-app payment, and try to block crypto on and off ramps. So we'll keep working on this. Sure. Um, I think that's probably a good note to end on. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Good luck with all the new products. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>